Well, Australian Fashion Week is over for another year. Presenting. Did, did I see you there? No. At the front row? I was busy working here oh, okay. every day. <laughs> but however, it is over, sadly, presenting the Resort 2018 collections of over 60 designers from Australia, New Zealand and China, with some of the shows in spectacular locations across Sydney. Well, to tell us more, fashion journalist Paddy Huntington joins us. Good morning, Paddy. You exhausted? I am. It was a jam-packed week. Jam-packed. Well, it's... It's come to a close. It has. And would you say that the payoff for making the Focus Resort was a good one? Absolutely. I mean, last year they said that there was a 75% increase in international buyers and uh, the buyers that I spoke to, I mean, really like it because just for the average sort of viewer out there, just a, a reminder that fashion thinks in four seasons, not two. So you've got the pre-collections like resort and pre-fall um, before the spring, summer, autumn, winter. Hang on. You're talking Northern Hemisphere, though, aren't you? I mean, no, no, that, no. that doesn't apply to Australia, surely. No, no, because they, they, do, they do four deliveries. And uh, so resort is before this big spring-summer thing, and now resort's become this massive season. Mm. And because Australia's positioned itself at the beginning of the resort season, the buyers really haven't seen much at all. So they're liking sort of coming to these shows and, uh, and sort of getting a taste of what's to come. And, uh, yeah, no, so big, big um, success, I think. Now, now, we might start with the end, because it went off with a bang Thursday night, because there was a bit of controversy last Last year that it ended with an international designer but on Thursday night it ended with the flamboyant and chaotic romance was born. It was beautiful, a beautifully produced uh, show that was very flamboyant. I mean we're looking at Dion Lee actually who, who opened the, the event at the Opera House and uh, uh, yeah look, I mean there was controversy over Oscar de la Renta which many myself included thought was great to have at the event but perhaps not to close it and uh, uh, this time there was a real Australian focus. I mean uh, this is Katama by Garrett Neff who's an American male supermodel uh, this was a show at the Andrew Boy Charlton swimming pool uh, with the HMAS well, Canberra. Well, just t-shirts and stubbies. No, no, it, well, it's, it's a men's <laughs> resort where London... See, that's the HMAS ca uh, uh, Canberra, Canberra behind yeah. him. Mm. So we had um, some amazing, uh, amazing sort of iconic Australia or Sydney locations behind... This is Ginger and Smart? No, this is Ten Pieces, Ten pieces at right. Bondi Iceberg. So oh. she can't kind of see that the, in the end the model sort of stood out on the balcony. So it was really very Australian in, in many ways from... You know, the locations. Uh, I mean, these are the shows that weren't at the actual main venue, Carriage Works, which has really proved itself. And look, talking about Australiana, I mean, this is Dion Lee and his, his collaboration with the Kubra hats. Now, that is very sort of iconically Australian. And he had other things as well, uh, such as uh, a collaboration with R.M. Williams for boots and, and designer thongs. He had them both in flat, flat, flat sandals and with a heel. So designer thongs. We're seeing some it's... there. It's ridiculous, isn't it, really? How much can you pay for a pair of thongs these days? Oh, hundreds of dollars, depending <laughs> on the brand. Um, look, the other thing we saw, Dion Lee also launched menswear for the first time at the... Uh, this is a show at the Sydney Opera House. And, uh, I mean, there was a big menswear focus. Now, this is Sarah Schofield, or Schofield, uh, one of the sort of new generation designers. Another thing I thought uh, that was interesting at this event, the calibre of the new talent coming out is really very, very strong. Uh, here are some of the mullets that we saw on, on, on the last yeah, day. Yeah, now, that played a big part, didn't it? On the Last day we had three separate shows that, that showed mullet hairdo. So it was very sort of grungy, dare I say, bogan. Is that, yeah, what, tilting your hat again at Australiana, the, the exactly. inner bogan. And, it, uh, pe I mean, you know, people loved Don't it. Don't tell it's coming back. Well, I mean, some of the, some of the, the models was, were cast off the street. Others were sort of, the, you know, the hairstylists actually created them on models. So there are some models who walked into the event with their regular hair and walked out with a mullet, whether they leave it in place remains to be seen. Here's an Ugg boot at, uh, at uh, 10 pieces. So, um, yeah, and street casting and diversity are, are on, on the runway was another big theme of the event. This is Strateas Carlucci that, uh, that had some professional models, but the model who opened it was this beautiful black, I think she was an actress, who they'd spotted on the street the day before. So that is really uh, quite untraditional from what we've seen in the past where, you know, you have these models from modelling agencies and they are primed and they are primed to the to the look that the designer wants. How is that industry feeling that they're just plucking people off the street now? Well, interesting, because it is disrupting the traditional, mm. but, but you've got to remember that the model agencies are now casting people off Instagram as well. So um, so it's, it's really changing, shaking it up. Uh, and look, I mean, a lot of the models in, in Strateas Colucci were, 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 were street cast. We saw it across other runways as well, but perhaps not to the degree of that. But where we saw it, um, you know, to the nth degree, was with a, a newcomer by the name of Thomas Puttick, who um, did his first show at the, at the event. And he 
he he used a couple of uh, professional models, but the rest of them were, were sort of older women, and that's another really big theme that we saw this week. We saw the return of at least five or six former top Australian models now in their 30s, 40s, 50s, even 60s. So Annalise. And Annalise Schubert. Ooh. We had uh, Emma Balfour at the same show. This is Christopher Esbar. And, I mean, fantastic to see them. It's and really bulky wear, isn't it? It is oversized, androgynous sort of menswear. Uh, this is uh, the, the Labor politician who... Uh, Anna Ali, I think it is. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. She she was in the Thomas Paddock. This is one of my shots. Um, th this was not a professional model, but a 63 year old graphic designer from Newtown, mm. uh, Yvonne Totsi, former top model in the in, in the sort of 70s and 80s. So I mean, he came to the event obviously with not much money and made a really big impact. Um, got a, and it was fantastic to see these older women um, on the runway. It's not and was just, that the general reaction? They oh, he got a huge amount of publicity over that. I mean, they were great clothes too. The buyers really loved his tailoring, and mm. uh, but just the, just the not to to the fact that fashion is not just about sort of 18 years. Yeah, so it is about that diversity, N not just you know, obviously multicultural, but also age as well. That's right. And, yeah. and look, there was quite a bit of size diversity too in his collection. So it was really nice to see. It was very refreshing. And uh, it was just wonderful to talk to these women backstage and how they were, uh, you know, feeling about going on the, the mm. runway for the first time in mm. the mid-60s. Mm. Now, Patty, you said street style. It's you say it's jumped the shark. In other words, it's just gone too far. What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, street style, you have to remember, that's what people are wearing outside the shows has kind of become an industry in itself. This, this week we saw Imogen Anthony who is a young Australian model. I believe she's also a designer and she's the partner of Carl Sanderlands. Mm. Uh, she sort of took it to the next level with a, with a series of very sort of over the top and, and quite risque outfits uh, and attracted a lot of publicity. And uh, on the last well, night she was wearing the idea, a, isn't it? a phallic bra, which I don't, I'm not sure we have photos of. But Maybe not. Um, and look, you know, it, look, fashion is theatrical and, and it's as much about what's on the runway as what's on the street, what the people are wearing. Uh, she did attract a lot of publicity, some of it um, negative. And I think you've got to remember it's really about the designers and mm. who's showing and having respect for them, and perhaps uh, there wasn't that much respect there. Mm. Okay. All right, Patty, always good to chat to you. Some great pictures to look at. Um, we will look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank My you. My pleasure.